Hello and welcome to another beautiful dancing dialogue with emerging archetypes. Today again with my dear brother, I want to say Olafur. It's so good to be back together. And today, as always, we have a little chat and then something comes up. And our theme for this dancing dialogue today is daring to be unique in our reality. So what sparks you right here on our theme, Olafur? Wow, <clears throat> daring to be unique is um, it's like uh, it's a theme I find like uh, of constant exploration of like, but if you think about it, if I when I think about it, what comes to me is that is the idea that we are already we are already unique mm -hmm. just, just from being. This is being who we are. So we could we could just ask like, well, um, translate that into just daring to be yourself. <laughs> and uh, and maybe it's like the willing uh, part of that process is most probably the willingness to be unique as yourself. But understanding that, like I, I am starting to come, yeah, you know, like coming to that understanding that when we allow ourselves to step into that being ourselves, being our unique selves, we also find that we do belong in the contextual wholeness that that we are in we will find our place yes in in a much more satisfying way than perhaps if when we are putting all this energy and trying to fit in mm -hmm. trying to fit into what you know that kind of thing so it's like well maybe this maybe it is maybe it is a question of well belonging to yourself first before you try to belong to others but because when we belong to ourselves we will find naturally our place of belonging so it really goes around goes it's about that need of belonging if you know, so I, really I love this angle here Olafur I think this is just you're opening up the whole space the uniqueness is obviously who we truly are this is our soul mission, our heart song. This is also the experience and the purpose of being human at this time. And so when we fit into boxes, we are maybe labels and status and whatever, but we're actually not really belonging because the real belonging is that unique piece that we have that naturally fits into the wholeness. Yes. Exactly. And so I feel this is a beautiful journey for all of us at this time, as it requires the individual level as much as the collective level. And that takes us maybe together into this new collective consciousness that hopefully rises us all. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you and I are fully aware, there's a different vibe, there's a different energy we're putting into the field. Mm -hmm. when we're trying to fit in or when we're giving our uniqueness absolutely absolutely and and but it is like it is also in some ways the the it, it is a more natural way huh? to to be ourselves than trying so it's like um than trying to fit into what we would call a monoculture. Mm -hmm. The monoculture is a culture of sameness yes. and similarities in certain ways. Um, and, and that's kind of that that becomes almost like a superficial, a little bit superficial connection. It is a type of connection. Mm -hmm. But like you said, and it is like when we 
become the piece that we are to the puzzle, the unique piece that we are in the puzzle, it is actually good for the puzzle. Uh -huh. Then the puzzle can take on the picture that it it actually is, and it's a it's a picture of uh, with with kind of paints a landscape of diversity, color, and different trends and themes and depths and variation that brings much more, you know, shall we say, even life presence or fulfillment in into this reality. This is at least how I imagine it. Yes. To be. Yes. And uh, but we are still have this beautiful, even in the, our our diversity. We're still we still have more things in common yeah. than, yeah, in spite of our uniqueness and and differentiation. We still we still have more things in common than sets us apart. Yes, or or makes us different. And I feel there is also a beauty in as we're bringing this uniqueness in the commonalities, the the, the, the things that hold us together because we're also talking about belonging here in a reality because we are not all living on an island on our own and in that it is like as the uniqueness comes in the the common is also bigger because now you get a synergy it's not no more one and one makes two why when you're coming in with the labels and the skill sets or whatever you have learned that maybe are some easier for you than us and others, but yet there comes a point where it kind of finishes. It's a limited source, but our uniqueness, because it is our true source, it doesn't finish. So this puzzle keeps on living, as you said, it has a living character that keeps on pumping energy and love and uniqueness into that beautiful wholeness mm -hmm. absolutely and that that makes sense in so many different ways to me but is understand it's under to me it's like what comes in that context is also it's probably most probably, my, most probably through this uniqueness that we experience this um continuously unfolding creativity of life moving through us yes you know? and i was like I, I, most probably that is actually that that might be the the very case this is because it's through the alignment of being who we are which is just basically owning our own existence yes and we do have infinite uh, shall we say commonalities or co-resonances with people and you know what have you around the world but are you but it is the, the stepping into our unique making and in our unique making is also i imagine for everybody in their own way what makes them excited what they are passionate about what they love etc etc all these things that makes them come alive the aliveness of each each individual is also there in that in that connection with themselves that unique connection with themselves it doesn't come from the ex from external sources it has to be lived from within yeah. but that is the very yeah. challenge to get the attention back Yes, to yes. ourselves in order to honor ourselves and that uniqueness. And I feel this is part of the evolution of humankind. Call it ascension, call it whatever you want. But I feel this is what we are learning. You know, they say that we have separated from God, from the divine. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. separated from the divine feminine. Again, there's many, many things we have separated from. Right. And yet, I feel... The key to reconnect is actually that uniqueness. As we are expressing that with excitement, because this is who we truly are, this is our vibration, 
we find co-resonance. I love that, that you used co-resonance. So all of a sudden, I feel new harmonics are created and composed at a level that actually we cannot imagine. And it comes to that point that you said they are then alive. Boxes are not really alive. It's just one box, another. You can put them in different directions. You can stake them. You can even create maybe shapes. But when something is alive, it's no longer a box. And it's no longer separated, I feel, also. So in that sharing this beautiful uniqueness that we have and daring to be it, I feel we become a true living part of the whole. I love that. Exactly. And that is, and it was like, um, we can learn so much from nature, from nature. It's like what we are learning, like, for example, uh, the, the vitality of the biosphere that we call Earth, the planet, consists of the consists of biodiversity. So it's diversity that creates the vitality of life. It is so it is not the monoculture. No. Monoculture sub subdues it you know, in a way. Yes. And there are of course there might be some places for monoculture in some way. Yeah. But uh, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not saying that, but in general, life-centric approach is to honor uniqueness and diversity to unfold, you know, and that, that, that uniqueness and diversity is life-enhancing all through the expression of itself as, as the unique parts of the whole and in all the relational elements that that sort of um, stem from it, that arise, you know, with it, you know. So it's like that. That is just as interesting part as the uniqueness itself is all the relationship that uniqueness creates in the whole that it is a part of in the relative yes. reality yes. field. Yes, and that brings us into the reality of nature. And when we truly observe it, as you said, it's all relational. Yes, And exactly. the wonder and the magic is unfolding in this relational connection, in this uniqueness that animals and plants and stones and everything weaves into this amazing nature. And I'm really fascinated living directly in nature now nature is so harmonic you know right there is no right. real predator in that sense this is all the harmony of nature i mean it's it is uh, it is mind-blowing <laughs> <laughs> it is just like you know when you i mean you just give it attention and start thinking about what is actually going on here yes in nature you know and it is it is like a miracle you know how is it possible that that like all these different parts and the relationships that are happening and the flow of life and its infinite variations are coming out as a functional whole that keeps everything in its place somehow i mean it's amazing the, it's amazing you cannot really but even the even the amount of like doesn't matter what it's like of course i believe that human beings are partially part of climate the problem of climate change and and what what we are doing to the biodiversity on the planet we we do have responsibility but the planet ability and capacity to maintain equilibrium in spite of everything that we are doing is just unbelievable. And now even maintaining the right amount of, <laughs> of oxygen 
combined with nitrogen or whatever, you know, it was here. Right? constantly in balance, uh -huh. like as if who is, who is, uh, what is it that it is that this brings, this is a question of, of, of consciousness. And I'm sure this is a question of quantum physics and all these things. And what, what is it that is, that is um, observing and collecting all the data down from all the different variation points to make make it so that we are keeping things like a supercomputer in a perfect equilibrium. Yes. But that could that does uh, that doesn't mean that that balance can not can't be disrupted. Yes, and I I feel so that's a different conversation. Yeah, it's a different conversation, yeah. but the part of that uniqueness, nature knows how to be unique and how to play their role and relate together in a way that this miracle earth, this miracle nature still mm -hmm. exists and is alive despite all the human influence and control. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, humans have this craziness that they want to control nature climate and whatever and yet yeah, yeah. said nature just does its thing and yeah. it does its thing in a way that we only maybe comprehend like somebody is putting all the data together and makes sure like a big computer that it stays there but maybe not maybe it's far more advanced maybe the computer that analyzes and makes sure everything stays in the equilibrium is just our little metaphor that helps us to comprehend maybe one percent of what is really going on. But, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, I would like to close this today because we're going to make it nice and sweet today, we said. I would like to close that today. Let's look in nature and dare to be unique and trust what unfolds in that amazing livingness of wonder and magic. How does that feel your way? Natural. That feels natural. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Olaf, for as always, what a pleasure. We're going to continue soon, I know. And yeah, daring to be unique. I feel that is something we can even explore more. And we hope we inspire, of course. And surely we're putting this vibe out there into the field, connecting to the uniqueness and wholeness of all. What's your final word today, Olaf? Just thank you for your, thank you for your, beautiful contribution to the to the field of uniqueness thank you all right we catch up very soon take care for now <laughs>